Thank you very much for coming here. Uh, it's an honor for me to come and lovely to see so many people from back home. At its heart, opposition is the voice of people. Where and how can I raise issues of the people of India? And you're thinking from an individual perspective and you're also thinking from a group perspective. You're thinking from an industry perspective. You're thinking from a farmer perspective. And the, the important thing is that you do it sensitively and after listening and understanding carefully. So very often you see an issue in the beginning when you're like, oh, that's what the issue is. But when you go into a little bit of detail, you realize that there is nuance and complexity. So understanding that nuance and then planning your day according to that, that's how it generally works. Parliament, of course, you go there in the morning and then it's like, uh, like a war. But it's a war of ideas, war of words. Foundation of modern India is the constitution. What people understood in the election clearly, and I saw it happening. When I used to raise the constitution like this, people understood what I was saying. Most importantly, what they understood was that anybody who is attacking the constitution of India is also attacking our religious tradition. Right? And we saw that immediately, within, within minutes of the election result, nobody in India was scared of the BJP or the Prime Minister of India. If we talk about a nation that is going to progress, and if we talk about India becoming a modern nation, we have to ask the question about participation of 90% of our population. We can't just ignore it. There's just no way we can ignore it. Because frankly, if we go down this path, it's not sustainable. Right? So it's not a question of caste or religion or Hindutva or anything else. It's a question of fairness. This is now an unstoppable idea. So the real question for the 21st century, the Chinese have placed a production vision on the table. It's a non-democratic production vision. Can the United States in India answer that by placing a vision for production in a democratic free society. Okay. And I think that's where a lot of answers lie. So the vision would be more of a decentralized production system. Unlike China, which is huge factories, we would be thinking about smaller and small medium businesses uh, and embedding modern technology into that. So there is a very small percentage of India which is controlling the entire infrastructure. And I made this point again and again in the election that 90% of India doesn't have representation among those people. I've been saying again and again and again, we're going to increase reservations beyond 50%. And I'm not against reservation. You have come from one union of states and you've come to another union of states. And you are our ambassadors. You're the bridge between these two great unions of states. And you make us very proud because we understand what it meant for you to come here. You came with humility, you came with respect, and you came with affection. You became part of the United States. I'm sure you're proud of India, and you're proud of the fact that you live in America.